work through the Spirit who keeps us focused and diligent in our duty to God and His plan for our lives. We can't waver or we will inadvertently lead others astray and delay the process of bringing God's kingdom onto earth. You say, well, Pastor Mary, isn't God in control of that? Yes, but who does he work through? Who does God work through? People, right? So if our hearts are not really hungry for him and we're ready to do whatever it takes to make things happen, well, we delay things. The answer is yes. We can. Do you want to be a part of the coming kingdom? I do. And that means we just have to keep moving, keep moving forward. No matter what's going on in life, we just keep moving forward. <clears throat> Jesus, he's the perfect example of a man passionately fulfilling his duty to fear God and obey his commands. He is one in spirit with the Father's plans. And you might say, well, Pastor Mary, he was God. Of course he did that. But I will remind you, the scripture teaches that Jesus was fully human as well as fully divine. In his humanity, he invited the Spirit to keep him one with the Father. And he makes a way for us to do that as well. We have to be as determined as Jesus. His humanity was filled with the Spirit, and that's what kept him following the prophetic plan that God had laid out for him. In our passage, we see Jesus. He's single-minded. The word is resolute. He, it is his duty and his destiny given by God to fulfill the prophecy of Messiah. He is Messiah. He is Messiah. And as he walked through every aspect of of God's plan, he revealed that. <clears throat> when Jesus um, calls us to follow him, he's calling us into a place of discipleship. Discipleship is based on devotion or duty to God. In other words, that means essentially the same thing as um, another word, actually. Let me give you a couple other words that I think are really helpful to me. When I think about discipleship, because you really don't read the word discipleship in the New Testament, but you read a lot about being made in the image of Christ and being transformed. And, and uh, uh, t there's talk about spiritual maturity, and, and that is essentially based on discipleship. The word conversion is, is a part of that whole process. Our duty to follow in making Jesus the Lord of our lives is to allow the Holy Spirit to bring that transformation or that spiritual maturity to us. The Holy Spirit instructs us on how a Christ follower thinks, how a Christ follower feels, and how a Christ follower acts. <laughs> and we'll see as we open up the Word of God that maybe where we find ourselves is different than what the Word says. So that's when the Spirit comes and helps us to get into agreement with the Word. <clears throat> The Holy Spirit opens doors for us to witness to others about the change that the Spirit is bringing into our lives. Christ followers will always encounter legitimate excuses and reasons to postpone the duty of discipleship. I want to talk to you just briefly about three things. Number one, the, co the commitment that we are called to make to Christ has to face cost. You have to look cost in the face. When Jesus said to uh, the first gentleman that came and said, I will follow you wherever you go, Lord, wherever you go, Jesus says basically, get ready. Get ready to experience isolation. Get ready to experience rejection. Get ready. In your walk with Christ, there will be seasons and times when you really feel alone. You do. God's strategic about it. He wants us to press in for more of Him, doesn't He? See, the only way that we can overcome the things in the world is to have this intimate, 
thriving, passionate relationship with Jesus. It's the vital link. He is the vine. We have to grab for more of God. And there's the cost of that. You're feeling, you'll feel it. You will have this feeling of isolation. Where are you, God? Where are my friends? Where, where do I go next? And in that uncertain place, you got to realize that God is calling you to draw nearer to Him. I remember one time I, I was having a conversation with my mom, and I said, you know, I'm, I so need a spiritual mentor. And the people who I have, who have been around me um, in, in leadership have no desire, the higher leadership has no desire to mentor me. And mother said this, and it was just like, do you ever have somebody say something that's just life-changing to you? Now, mom does that all the time with me. It's okay. <laughs> she is my spiritual mentor, just for the record. She doesn't have this big clergy position, but mother is a spiritual and has been a spiritual mentor to me my whole life. And she says, Mary, Jesus just wants you to draw nearer to him. He wants to be your spiritual mentor personally. Don't settle for a human mentor when God has offered himself. And I just went, oh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Profound. Profound. Sometimes they say to people, I want to help you, I want to be there, and I'm going to cheer you on. But you better connect to Jesus because he is the one who's going to take you to the finish line. Amen. Amen. I'm here for you. But I'm kind of like going like, come on, come on, come on. I can't make the journey for you. It's your journey. You make it. He wants to give you himself. That commitment's going to cost. He wants us to know that. Number two, devotion always faces some kind of death. It just does. Jesus, he calls to the other person, he says, follow me. The man says, Lord, let me return home and bury my father. And Jesus' response is, your duty is to preach the urgency of the kingdom living. Some people will prefer to go back to dead ways. And you can't follow. You can't go back can't go back. See, Jesus, he's so, oh my goodness, he's so tricky. Is that the word you use? He, you know what? He is. Because he has this way of wooing you in just so far and you can't go back and you have, you have to trust him to go forward. You can't do it on your own. And I'll be like, Ooh, look where you got me. <laughs> it's love. It isn't trickery. <laughs> And he wounds you there. He knows. He knows that you're not going to be able to go backward. He knows that you have to leave some stuff behind that's dead. It's holding you down. He knows it. And he makes you disconnect with that over there. Let it, to let that die that you have held so tightly to. And he has this space in between. And then you have to reach out of your comfort zone to lay hold of that. It's a promise. He promises he's going to be faithful to take us on the journey. And uncertainty is a part of it. So who are you going to count on? Are you going to fully rely on God? Are you going to try to make sense of things in your natural mind? You have to allow yourself to let certain things go. When I think about this passage, I'm thinking, Jesus, that sounds so harsh. You know, let, let the dead bury the dead. I'm like, how? Ah, what does that really mean? There's just some people that are not going to make the journey with us. They're just not. They don't want to. And, it, you know, like I heard one time, oh, a pastor said to me, it was very funny. I've worked with quite a few pastors in the past and loved them all in their own way. And 
one of them one day I was saying, oh, oh Pastor so-and-so, we got to move forward. We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. You know, like I, one of my mentors told me one time in seminary, very like, you're like this fine racehorse. You're just like charged with the gate and you're like, ready to go. I'm like, I know, I'm just like. Mm. Well, this so-called fine racehorse has learned not to get ahead of the Lord the hard way. You gotta run the race, but you gotta run the race with your hands connected to Jesus Christ. And you don't want to get ahead, and you don't want to get behind, and you don't want to stay living in the comfort zone, and your everything in you will scream, I don't want to go forward until I know that I know that I know, and that's not faith. You gotta use your faith. And you can't be afraid of letting go of some things in the past and moving forward. It's all about moving forward. But Jesus is gonna always be about moving forward. So devotion faces death of some certain things. And the third one, direction faces an absolute disconnect. He says here, I will follow you, but let me say goodbye to my family. This third response that Jesus makes is an invitation. It's a combination of the first two things. I'll follow you wherever, but let me return to some things that make me comfortable. And here we see that Jesus says it this way. Nobody puts their hand to the plow and looks back if they're fit for the kingdom. So in other words, we will not be fit for the kingdom if we continue to think we can put ourselves forward by looking back all the time. I'm thinking about that word plow. You know that plow, we, we, we cut furrows, right? When we're plowing, we cut furrows. And it needs to be uh, on a path, a guided path, because a lot depends on it. Seeds depend on it, right? I was thinking about when I was a young girl. Uh, well, actually, just a few years ago. Right, Bubby? <laughs> um, 46 years ago, actually. I was in driver's training. 44 years. 44. And I remember that my instructor took me out on I-75, an interstate. At the time, the speed limit was 75. I was in a driver's training car, which was a huge, somebody say huge. Huge. Station wagon. <laughs> And I-75 was under construction. There was one lane, and there were cones on both sides of the lanes. And my instructor said, drive, Mary. Drive. I was distraught. I did okay. I merged on, but the traffic was flying. I, this monstrous vehicle that I was driving you know it was I could barely reach the paddles it was a boat on wheels it was huge and I was driving and I was like I can't do this I said I'm gonna have a meltdown he goes Mary you're looking too close to the front of the car look down the road and you'll be fine. And all of a sudden, I felt my hands on the wheel relax. And I realized that God has made us in such a fashion as when we're really looking for those things that are promised down the way, He just keeps our path going. We're like, it's okay. I was just could see myself barreling down this road, knocking these barricades, right? <laughs> and they're going to, I was like, hey, hey, hey. I don't know why I was so worried about it, but I was just a mess just a mess. I had to disconnect from certain areas of my human understanding. Number one, I had to forget that the barricades were on either side of me, even though I knew they were there. I had to stop focusing on them. And I had to focus farther down. Because my brain would make the path. It would happen. And I'd be fine. And it would just keep me going. You and I 
have to focus on eternity. We do. We have to have eternal goals in mind. If you and I are going to actually manifest the prophetic dreams and destinies that God has for us, we got to look farther down and just keep our eyes on Jesus. And we have to go past these things. We have to do that. I had to disconnect with what my natural senses were telling me. To say, oh, okay, I'm going to look farther. It's a spiritual principle. It is a spiritual principle that if you keep eternity in mind, you will live clearly and more godly today in this human time. Do you believe that? If so, say amen. Amen. If you and I always have this ability to go like, number one, Jesus is the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha, He's the Omega. He, there, nothing is going to come to change what He wants to do in my life. I will accomplish everything that I want and desire to do in Christ Jesus as long as my life is in sync with Him. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. I don't have to worry. I have to know that He's going to protect me. He's going to keep me safe. I'm going to accomplish everything that He wants me to accomplish as long as he is my first love. Somebody say, Lord. Lord. When you have made Jesus Lord, he is your first love. You're not divided. You can't be divided. The rest of it's idolatry. You have to go to yourself, okay, I am going to stay completely devoted to his love for me. And I'm going to receive his love all the time and live that out. This is always about love. Your duty is just simply to recognize how much God loves you, for heaven's sakes. Do you recognize the extent that God goes to just to show you that? Amen. That was not everybody was it. You want me to say it again? Yeah. Do you realize how much God loves you? He has a plan for your life, and there is no devil in hell that can stop it from coming to pass if you will make him Lord. Amen. 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 That's better. Amen. That's better. Make him your priority. Make him your priority. Allow for him to plow the hardened ground of your heart. Allow it. Yeah, some stuff's got to die and get pushed aside and turned up and there's some stuff that gets uncomfortable. Stay focused on the eternal promise of God that He loves you and He has a plan for your life. That path, you will find as you make Jesus Lord and you walk just a little bit farther down the road each day, keeping eternity in your vantage point. <coughs> You will find that you think differently, you feel differently, and you act differently because love has, in, has truly inhabited your heart. See, we think we know about love, but you don't know about love until love truly starts filling you. Amen? Amen. To that. It's different than you ever think. We have such a human understanding of love. And God is not, not going to love you the way that you think you want to be loved. He's going to love you the way that is pure, pure, selfless, selfless, self-giving. He's like, I just can't hardly wait to give myself to you. Do you want me? Amen. And your answer needs to be, yes, yes, yes. Lord. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this word today, Lord. And help us to remember what you're going to be doing in our lives. Help us to stay willing to, in that place of commitment, Lord, that determined place, that devoted place, and to be willing to disconnect, Father. Willing to disconnect from the things of this world if we even need to in order to embrace a greater vision of eternity. Help us to be excited Lord, about what you're doing in our lives. It's a great journey, an awesome invitation. Help us to realize that it is the work of the Spirit to bring forth 
the kingdom through all of our lives, all of us, as your body. So help us to find our places. In Jesus' name, amen.